Hello everyone, my name is Jesper Cox and this talk is about a story that started about five years ago when I started working on implementing a new feature for the Agda Proof Assistant, so-called user-definable rewrite rules. However, the story really took off about two years ago when I was contacted by two people from France, uh, Theo and Nicolas, and they were really interested in the work that I was doing and they also wanted to add a similar feature to the cockproof assistant. However, they were much more worried than I was at the time about the meta-theoretical implications of adding rewrite rules to a proof assistant. And so that's why we decided to start collaborating on a meta-theoretical study of dependent type theory with rewrite rules. And today I'm very glad to be able to present the results of that work so far. Uh, but first, let me start by introducing the motivation a bit for why we want to have rewrite rules in a proof assistant in the first place. So in a proof assistant such as Agda or Koch, we typically get access to a few very general mechanisms that allow us to define types as well as functions over these types. So for example, we can define inductive data types as long as they satisfy a certain strict positivity condition. We can define functions over these data types by doing complete case splits that cover all the cases. And finally, we can also define recursive functions as fixed points, as long as they satisfy a certain termination criterion, such as structural recursion. And these mechanisms are very general and powerful, and they allow us to do a lot of things However, sometimes they make it harder than necessary to do prove certain things, or they might even make certain things completely impossible to define. Um, and I want to give uh, two examples where uh, that those are the case. Right. So let me switch uh, to Agda. So here I've given the standard definition of addition on unary natural numbers. So uh, the only thing to note here is that well, it's defined by recursion on the first argument. Um, and now let's assume we want to prove that this addition is commutative. So how do we do this? Well, again, we want to proceed by doing a case analysis and then using induction. Uh, so in the first case where x is zero, uh, we have to prove that zero plus y equals y plus zero. As you can see here at the bottom. Um, now, intuitively, this is something that should, should just hold, right? Uh, so if we try to tell Agda that uh, by saying, well, this should hold by reflexivity, these two are equal, then unfortunately, Agda is not happy. And it tells us that y is not equal to y plus zero. Um, and similarly, in the second case, we want to we have to prove that successor of x plus y is equal to y plus successor of x. And again, we want to conclude this by using congruence and using the inductive hypothesis. Uh, unfortunately, again, Agda complains that this uh, y plus successor of x is not of the form successor of something else. And if we look at the definition of plus, we can see why. Well, uh, this only tells Agda how to compute plus uh, when the first argument is either zero or successor. Uh, so if you want to do better, uh, there is no way to do so in, uh, in a standard dependently typed language. So we really have to write a more complicated proof here. However, if we want to make it easy, we can use rewrite rules. So let me show you how. So first we would have to prove uh, two simple laws here. So two computation rules, what happens if we do x plus zero or x plus successor. And then we can tell that Agda should apply these as rewrite rules by using this uh, rewrite pragma. And from now on, Agda will rewrite the left-hand side here, x plus zero, and x plus successor y to the right-hand side whenever it sees anything of that shape. And now we can try to do the same proof again that we did before. And this time we can see this actually accepted the two steps. So that is nice. So rewrite rules can really make it easier to prove certain things. 
Um, however, let us take a look at another example that will perhaps be more interesting to more advanced users of uh, these proof assistants. So quotients are something that is used a lot in the mathematical community. However, it's not something that's very well supported or supported at all by dependently typed proof assistants. Um, so you might say, well, that's not a problem. If it's not natively supported, we can always postulate their existence. So that's what I did here. So this is a quotient type. So if we have a type A and a binary relation on that, we can take the quotient A over R and we have a projection and we have a quotient uh, law. Uh, and then finally, we have a recursion principle. So this recursion uh, allows us to define functions out of the quotient type. So it allows us to define a function from A over R to B provided we have a function from A to B, as well as a proof that, well, the function maps related arguments to equal outputs. So let's see if this is actually a reasonable definition of a quotient type. So, and here is a simple example. I define uh, the natural numbers modulo two as a quotient type. So using the natural definition, so two ter terms are related if they are equal modulo two. And then I also define a function out of this quotient type, just taking the representative, so either zero or one, of uh, an element of this quotient type. And now let us try to prove that well, taking the representative of the projection of the number two, well, that should be zero, since it two is an even number. Um, and unfortunately, if we try to prove this, then Agda is again not happy. It tells us that this recursion principle uh, it does not compute. And well, again, this is uh, not unreasonable because we just told Agda that this is a postulate, so there is no computational behavior associated to this. And again, we can use rewrite rules to fix this problem. So here I have one extra postulate, which postulates the computation rule for this recursion principle when it's applied to a projection. And we can enable this as a rewrite rule using this pragma. Um, and if we add this rewrite rule, well, we can try to prove this again. And indeed, now it is accepted by Agda. So to summarize, uh, rewrite rules uh, can be used for two purposes. So either they can be used to enhance existing definitions to make them compute in more situations and make it easier to write proofs about them. Or they can also be used to add new primitives to the proof assistant and make them compute just as if they were uh, natively supported. So, and what that brings us to the main contributions of our paper. So, and these contributions can be divided into two parts. So first we did a formal meta-theoretical study of uh, dependent type theory enhanced with user-definable rewrite rules, which we call rewriting type theory. And this is formalized in Coq as an extension of the meta -Coq language, which is a formalization of the Coq core language. And we also proved that this language satisfies uh, subject reduction as well as some other properties. However, for this, we need to assume a certain property or a certain condition on the rewrite rules, namely a certain triangle property, which I will explain later. And then the second part of our contribution is an implementation of rewriting type theory as an extension of the Agda proof assistant, as I just showed you. And uh, this implementation includes also a uh, automated check of this triangle property. So if this is enabled, then we can guarantee that the language will indeed satisfy subject reduction. And now I will give the word to Theo, who will explain a bit more about the meta theory of rewriting type theory. Okay, so what um, the general shape of a rewrite rule is going to be something like we have a left hand side that rewrites to a right hand side, here written LHS and RHS respectively, 
and a rewrite rule is taken in the context of um, pattern variables that we label here with the um, question mark. Um, so what um, a left hand side can be, uh, so it can be a symbol like that we will call f for instance. Um, it can also be uh, another left hand side that's applied to a pattern or um, we can also deal with uh, different cases like a left hand side that is being projected or um, a pattern matching on the left hand side. So here I just used the, the example where we pattern match on natural numbers. Um, okay, and the patterns could, can be like the pattern variables or they can be a constructor applied to uh, several patterns. So for instance, zero is a pattern and successor of a um, successor of zero is a pattern, successor of question mark x is a pattern. Um, so if we forget about the two last cases of left, uh, left hand sides like projections and matching, we will have uh, a symbol applied to several patterns, so something like this. And again, um, the only pattern variables are those that are bound uh, on the left of the turnstile. Um, we have some uh, restrictions about those. So the pattern variables must appear uh, linearly uh, in the left-hand side. So that means that they must appear exactly once for each of the pattern variables. Uh, we also ask that the symbol that is in head uh, must be fresh. Uh, that means that it has to be defined at the same time as the rewrite rule, or it has to be postulated, really, at the same time as the, the rewrite rule. And at the moment, as you could see in the, the pattern syntax that I just showed, um, we do not deal with uh, higher order uh, rules. So you cannot match on lambda x something or pi types, for instance. Um, but that's not, um, that's not a restriction per se. It's more like we still haven't dealt with this uh, in our formalization. But we hope to deal with this in the future. And it actually uh, is something that's already available in the ACTA implementation. OK. Um, so if we mm, think about the meta theory of rewrite, uh, rewriting type theory, we have to wonder about several things like do we uh, preserve logical consistency, do we preserve decidable type checking, and do we preserve uh, type safety or subject reduction. Uh, so let's have a look at all of these uh, one by one and how they might be problematic. So um, if, you, if you think about logical consistency you could uh, wonder what if uh, we rewrite, what if we were to rewrite 0 to 1? Wouldn't that break consistency? And the answer is that yes, it would. Uh, but it's not different uh, from uh, postulating 0 equals 1. And actually, we have a theorem uh, to back that claim uh, that says that uh, for if each rewrite rule has um, like an instance, if you can prove the, the underlying equality, so L equals R, then R, then the system is consistent. Um, and uh, so that means that um, the only uh, way to introduce uh, inconsistencies is by just rewriting something where the equality would not be consistent in itself. And the way we prove this theorem is by going through uh, extensional type theory and using the reflection rule to interpret each of these um, rewrite rule. It's each equality uh, has conversion. Um, and the fact that we have this theorem means that uh, we actually do not rely on strong properties like termination of the, syst of the reduction system uh, to preserve consistency. And that's actually very, very interesting. Um, 
On the other hand, if you were thinking about just what I just told about uh, extensional type theory, you might be wondering, then what about decidable type checking? Because here you can see uh, uh, type, uh, rewrite rules are as some sort of um, restriction of the of the extensional type theory uh, reflection rule, and uh, then we know that extensional type theory doesn't enjoy decidable type checking at all. And again, uh, the answer is yes. We can break decidable type checking uh, with rewrite rules. But um, if we have a confluent rewriting system, then the usual uh, con uh, conversion and type checking algorithm is still correct as long as it terminates. So when it says that two things are convertible or that a term is indeed of type A, then you can trust it. Uh, and it actually, uh, in the case that the system is also terminating, then we regain decidable type checking because the the type checking algorithm uh, is now terminating. So um, with this we are able to claim that termination is not really required uh, for, for practical type checking. Uh, so uh, in, in, in some sense um, it's not so different as when you have practical non-termination when just things just look look like they're looping because they're taking uh, forever uh, even though they're terminating um, in the in this in the former sense um, okay um, the strongest point I think is uh, type safety then and we can wonder is any confluent set of confluent set of rewrite rule okay and the answer is no um, for instance, if you were to take uh, a rewrite rule from NAT to NAT, uh, rewriting to NAT to bool, then you would uh, no longer enjoy uh, type safety uh, because you were you would be able to type check the identity function uh, at type NAT to bool because it's convertible to NAT to NAT, and then apply this function uh, to zero, and that would yield a boolean. And now, um, if you were to reduce this zero prime, you would get zero, but that's not a boolean. So you have uh, encountered some problem, and it's actually worth uh, noting that the only rewrite rule that we uh, introduced to break this is actually uh, type preserving, because uh, you have a type on both sides. So it's not uh, as trivial as it might seem. And uh, you would have the same problem if you didn't have uh, confluent rules by just saying we take the symbol A and it rewrites both to not to not and to not to bool. So this is not uh, an issue also uh, only from the fact that we are rewriting uh, pi types directly. Okay, um, but um, I think this shows uh, that confluence is a uh, really important uh, property and that it needs to be checked and Jesper is going to show you uh, how uh, we uh, achieve this. So, as Theo just explained to you, the crucial property that we need for rewriting type theory to be well behaved is confluence of reduction, so confluence of all the rewrite rules together with the native beta reduction of the type theory. And unfortunately, many of the classical confluence criteria, such as the knut bendix criterion, um, they are not sufficient for our purpose because they only prove local confluence of the rewrite rules, which in absence of termination is not enough to conclude global confluence. So we had to look a bit further for a suitable confluence criterion. And this criterion really has to satisfy two important uh, properties. Namely, first of all, it has to be something that is easy to explain to the user so that the user can predict whether or not a given set of rewrite rules will be accepted. And also it has to be simple enough to 
implement and to formalize as part of our metacog formalization. So those two criteria brought us to a quite old uh, confluence check and by uh, two of the masters, namely Tate and Martin Leuf. Uh, and this confluence criterion is based on the notion of parallel reduction. So what is parallel reduction? Well, it's a variant of small step reduction that allows us to reduce all the beta redexes as well as other redexes that are visible uh, on the left in a single step. So let us look as an example. So here on this term at the left, we see that there are two beta redex or two redexes. Namely, we have the plus with the successor, and we also have a beta redex here, uh, lambda applied to zero. So we can, in one single parallel step, reduce this to a successor of a plus zero plus b. Uh, however, we can see there is a new redex here, but this one wasn't visible yet on the left. So for that, we would need to do a new parallel step. And this parallel reduction was used by Tate and Martin Leuf to prove confluence of untyped lambda calculus. Uh, so how does this proof work? Well, it relies on a crucial property called the triangle property of parallel reduction. And this states that each term t has an optimal reduct, which we call rho of t. And so first of all, we must have, of course, that t reduces to rho of t in a parallel step. And then for every other uh, parallel reduct, u of t, we also have that u reduces to rho of t in a single parallel step. And if this triangle property holds, then it's very easy to prove global confluence of parallel reduction by simply gluing together two of these triangles. And from that, we can also conclude global confluence of the small step reduction quite easily. So what we did is extend this to our setting of rewriting type theory. And now, of course, this triangle property, well, it doesn't always hold, but it's something that we can check to hold of our rewrite rules. Uh, and again, if it holds, then we can use the same proof to prove global confluence of the reduction. And one very nice property of this triangle property that is that we can check it in a modular fashion. So that means if we import two different modules that both define some rewrite rules uh, and both of the modules separately satisfy the triangle criterion, then we can import both of them together and conclude that the whole system together also satisfies the triangle criterion. Uh, this is on the condition that there is no overlap between the symbols uh, that are involved in the rewrite rules. Right. Um, so how do we actually check this triangle property? Well, we have come up with a simple algorithm that proceeds in three steps. Uh, so first of all, it starts by simply fixing an order on the rewrite rules, and this order will be important in the second and the third step. Then in the second step, we check that the left-hand sides of the rewrite rules are closed under unification. So if we what does that mean? Well, if we have two rewrite rules and there is some overlap between the two left-hand sides, so that they have a most general unifier, then there has to be another rewrite rule which has the most general unifier as the left-hand side. As well, and also this rule should come earlier in the list of rules. So what does that mean? That means this rule can be used to resolve the conflict uh, when there is overlap between two rules. And finally, in the third step, we have to check that this triangle property holds locally for each rewrite rule. Uh, so in particular, when we have a rewrite rule that rewrites L to R, then we have to check for each possible parallel reduction, L reduces to some W, that uh, this W reduces again in one parallel step to R. So we have uh, implemented this uh, check in Agda. So let me show you. Um, so here is the example I had before with the definition of plus that computes on uh, both arguments. And now I can scroll to the top of the file and enable the confluence check by adding this uh, pragma here and reloading the file. 
And now, unfortunately, you can see that Agda is not happy with this, as it uh, says that the global confluence check failed. And that's not surprising because, well, there is actually a most general unifier. So here, this uh, successor plus zero, um, that uh, is not the left-hand side of any rewrite rules. So to help the confluence checker a bit, we need to add some extra rewrite rules, which I will do now. So in particular, we have to add these three rewrite rules. So first of all, one saying what happens with successor x plus zero. Uh, second one saying what happens with zero plus successor y. And finally, the third one saying what happens when we add two successors together. And now if we add all of these as rewrite rules, uh, the confluence check uh, succeeds and we can indeed be certain that the rewrite system that we defined here is globally confluent and hence subject reduction is preserved. So I hope that we have um, convinced you that rewrite rules are great if you want to uh, improve computation of existing definitions like uh, the parallel plus that we, we showed um, or um, to postulate new primitives uh, and computation rules in them, for instance, the, the quotient uh, type, but also, uh, let's say, higher inductive types with their eliminators. Um, and uh, because we have the, the strangle criterion, uh, we can ensure that they preserve uh, confluence and type safety in a modular way. Um, which is uh, really a requirement that you want uh, to have in a proof assistant. Um, once again, all of this has been formalized uh, in the Metaco project. Uh, so we have theorems, uh, cock proofs uh, corresponding to the theorems of confluence and uh, type safety. And uh, we have an implementation of this uh, in ACTA that uh, Jesper just showed to you. Um, if you want to learn more, then you can, of course, read the paper. Um, you can already play with rewriting uh, in Agda by just installing a rewrite uh, Agda. And um, if you want, you can also um, have a look at the formalization, uh, at the Metaco formalization of, the, this, of this result. And uh, if you want, you can also um, have a look at the proposal to uh, extend COC we will write rules so that we have something similar to ACTA. So there's a discussion on GitHub about this uh, that is ongoing. Thank you for watching.